Today I'm going to be showing you how to play the game Clear Obscure Expedition 33 on a Mac. So this is a Windows only game, but we can actually run it through a real-time translation layer called Crossover, working on an Apple Silicon Mac. So you've got an M series Mac, for example, the M1, M2, M3, or M4, then this is gonna be the tutorial for you. And I'm gonna be teaching you the various tips and tricks to get this running on your Mac. There are a couple of things that we need to do, including library overrides. There's a trick in getting the frame rate actually working at a decent speed, changing the upscaling method. So you can change the frame rate from going for about six FPS to about 40 to 60 FPS on this particular MacBook Pro with the M3 Max chip. This will also work with other Macs too, but I do recommend at least 16 gigabytes, uh, preferably 24 gigabytes of memory in total. This is because this Unreal Engine 5 game uses a lot of video memory as well. So basically, if you've got an M1 Pro machine or above, then you're probably gonna be able to play this game. But if you have 24 gigabytes and say an M2 Pro or above, then that's probably preferable for you here. But nevertheless, you can try this out yourself. You can buy Cloud Obscure and use the uh, basically 14 day trial in, in the sense that you can fund it if you're not happy with it and as long as you play it for less than two hours and we also have crossover 25 which is a paid product but you can free trial this as well for 14 days unlimited usage and if you're not happy with the performance you can just refund that as well so basically i'm going to be teaching you the entire process of getting this to run getting the controller to run uh, also some tips and tricks getting the windowed and full screen modes to hide the menu bar uh, properly and the dock as well so that you can get the best experience running this game on your Mac as you can. So first thing to do is to click on the link at the top of the video description. Every purchase made after clicking this link is going to help to support this channel and the content that I create. So once you've clicked on the link in the description, you'll be taken to the store page here with the discount automatically applied. You can actually do a free trial if you wanted to, but if you did want to purchase this, I do recommend buying Crossover Plus. This isn't actually a subscription service. It's actually going to give you a permanent license for Crossover 25 if you buy it right now and any version of Crossover released in the next 12 months. But what you can do as well is click the Try Now button and make use of a completely free 14-day free trial. So just go ahead and enter your name and email address and then click to download the trial now. So here it's saying Crossover is now downloading and it's going to go into our Downloads folder. So then we're going to go ahead to Finder and then we're going to go to our Downloads folder and then we'll find the Crossover zip file, which we'll double click on. And then once that's extracted, we're going to drag and drop this into our Applications folder. And then within Applications, we're going to scroll down until we find Crossover and then we'll double click on the application here. So just double click on that. And it's saying here, Crossover is an app downloaded from the internet. Let's open it up now. So now Crossover has opened up and we're now free to go ahead and download a multitude of Windows games and applications. What we're going to do now is to download Steam. So we're going to click the install button here, do a search for the word Steam and then click on this Steam icon here. And then we're going to go ahead and install it. And it's going to go ahead and create what's called the Steam bottle. And then it's going to put all of our Windows Steam files in one place. So if it asks to install fonts, just press yes and then just continue and allow this to complete. You can see it's running some stuff in the background and it's automatically agreeing to all of the windows there. Here we're going to agree to the terms and conditions, press install, and we're going to install Visual C++ here as well, close, and then the Windows version of Steam is now loading up. So just press next here, next, and we're going to install Steam in the local directory and then click finish, and then it's going to run Steam. So here we can see that the Windows version of Steam is now updating. And now the Windows version of Steam's login window pops up and we can log in with our Steam account. I'm going to be logging in using my phone app and I can go ahead and scan the QR code on screen and then we're going to log into my existing Steam account. And now our Windows Steam library is loading up here and we can basically download and install a bunch of Windows games. Many of them will actually work through Crossover 25. So one tip as well is that if you want to run any advanced DirectX 11 or 12 games, then we want to change this graphic settings from Auto into D3D Metal. That's going to select this manually. And I'm going to change the synchronization from default to M-Sync. And that's going to get the best performance out of the majority of Windows games. So next what I'm going to do is to show you how to override these errors that you're going to face when you actually try to launch the game regarding Visual C++. So I found this particular issue with Crossover 25. However, it appears to be fixed with Crossover Preview, the current version of 2025-0404. So to avoid this process, I'm just going to show you how to override the basically VC redistributables to solve this problem. So ideally we would close down Steam at first. So you select your Steam bottle and then we get a one configuration. And then within configuration, when the window pops up, we're gonna to go to libraries 
and then we're going to apply some overrides. So I'm going to leave these in the description. We want to click on this drop down menu and then type in MSVCP 140. Okay. And we want to add all three of these overrides. So we're going to do the first one here, add. Then we want to do that again. We want to add MSVCP 140 underscore one and basically underscore two as well. Okay. So those are the main three ones. And then we have another one called VC runtime 140 and VC runtime 140 underscore one. So you can see these both here. Click add. And then that's going to bypass um, some of the VC runtime issues that we have. Um, this also helps for games like Tokyo Extreme Racer and also Ninja Gaiden 2, two Black, Black 2. Okay, so we're going to launch this now. Uh, of course, we've got graphics set to D3D Metal and also M-Sync as well. So now that we've finally set everything up, we're going to open up the Windows version of Steam once again and then make a purchase. So just make sure to quit out of Steam if you haven't already and it will start fresh by double clicking on it again and loading up the Windows version of Steam. Next, we're going to make sure that Claire Obscure has been added to our library. We need to make a purchase of that Windows version, so make sure it's part of your Steam account. Once you've made that purchase, you can go ahead and find it in your library and then install it into its default location or anywhere else on your Mac. It's a 40 gigabyte file, so wait for that to finish downloading. So then we're going to run Claire Obscure Expedition 33. So and, uh, we should be able to run this now. Metal HUD on the top right hand side of the screen. If you want to find how to do that, this enables you to see the frame rate counter and also whether it's running through D3D12 or D3D11, etc. So when you first load up into a new game, basically you might find that the frame rate is rather low. And that might be because your game has defaulted to use XESS. So we can fix this by going into the graphics settings and changing the scaling type from XESS to TSR. So this is going to give way better frame rates. We have on low preset, but I could probably run it on medium. Uh, it is scaling at 75%, so similar to quality. Quality is like 66% resolution, isn't it? Also, every time that you toggle your settings, then the window in the dock is going to overlay over. And the way to fix that is to press the command and return button a couple of times on your keyboard. This will toggle between window in full screen mode and remove those bars. To get Bluetooth controllers working, just basically pair them onto macOS. Here I've got my Sony DualSense controller working just fine. We were playing with the DualSense, DualSense controller and it seems to be working fine. So this game is basically working flawlessly on the Mac. So I've got the M3 Max chip in a MacBook Pro and I've got 48 gigabytes of RAM. So you probably need quite a lot of RAM to get this to run minimum 16 gigabytes, preferably 24 plus because you can see on the top right hand side of the screen, we are using 23 gigabytes already. 17 gigabytes is video memory. So I think this game will struggle at the bare minimum settings at 16 gigabytes. So make sure you have enough. But other than that, this seems to run pretty much flawlessly. I didn't have any graphical issues at all after playing this about three hours in. And it remains one of the most visually stunning games that I've actually played as an Unreal Engine 5 game. And it's very thematically interesting with the storyline, the voice acting, all top notch. Uh, especially good considering that this is coming from a, basically an indie dev studio. I also really liked the combat mechanics as well. So there's quite a lot of depth here, I can tell. There's uh, basically turn-based action where you can interact in real-time elements like uh, dodges and parries, and you can do things like aim at weak points as well. It's all handled in a turn-based JRPG style manner, but uh, it's done in a really interesting and uh, dynamic way. So very interested in this game. Like I said, I've played this game for about three plus hours now and I didn't encounter any graphical issues either with the in-game real-time generated cutscenes or with any of the user interface elements too. All the stuff like the menus, the skill trees, all of the character animations, etc. nothing seemed to glitch out. So I'm quite happy and confident to say that this will probably run and you'll probably be able to play the entire game on your Mac, which is very excited about, especially because this doesn't have a native Mac port. This is a real-time translated game using software that was built before this game was even released. And so it's very exciting to be able to play through a game like this. So anyway, if you want to find out any more about crossover games running on your Mac and other tutorials, then make sure to check it out. I'll leave a link to these in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.